Greetings friends. Today we're going to responsibly style check boxes. Nest all three of your chest check boxes in a div class where, oh, first off I wanna read. Since bootstraps, column, excess, and then the, the whatever number you want to do, classes are applicable to all form elements, you can use them on your check boxes too. This way, the check boxes will evenly spread out across the page, regardless of how wide the screen resolution is. Nest all three of your check boxes in a row element, and then nest each of them within a um, column excess four element. So four, eight, nine, or four, eight, twelve. So we're, we know our check boxes are going to be take up a third of the page. Okay, and so I'm going to pull this back again so that we can easily see it. And I'm gonna scroll down and find the check boxes. Okay, cool. Now, their code, again, I'm cleaning this up because I like things to be um, orderly. I, I wanna be able to see everything. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just simplifying it. Because right now we've got a row right here. This is the opening of the tab for the row, and then this is the closing. So. I can just add a space here and then we can create a new row, right? This helps uh, increasing the space like this and, and, and making it laid out like this, it helps me see it more because um, initially, you know, the code was quite messed up and it was difficult to see, but now I can just tell there's a row here and then I want to have these checkboxes within here. And so I can just cr close this div and then we've got a row here. Now our checkboxes are all within a row and uh, we can create, um, we can fix them. So I'm gonna do the same spacing situation. I wanna fix the spacing situation. And then I'm pressing shift tab to bring back the labels. Okay, so now it's actually quite, way more easy to see, right? We've got our low label and then open label, close label, open label, close label. So these are our three labels, and within here, we want to add a column to each of them. So div class equals a column xs4. Uh, and then we want to, underneath this one, close the div. And I increase the tab. Now we can see our first one, it's already um, filled in the space. This one is now, doesn't it doesn't cover the whole page, it just covers this third of a column. And so we're just gonna do this with each with the other ones as well. And put in a close div. And put in close div. And we wanna tab these guys out. Cool. And so yeah, I hope it makes sense that why I make it like this. I mean, in, I know it's taking up way more lines, but this is a simple bit of code and once you get it right, you can do it like this. And this is super easy to read. I would actually even, um, do it like this to maintain the style that I've got here where we've got the icon and then the label above and so it's easy to read and it's easy to see we're like you can tell okay this is our row these are our columns easy peasy and they're all spread out perfectly here and if we run the tests I think it'll pass so yeah um, yeah, the, the, it's said to be excess, so they, they stay in their way. You see, like right now, and they're still three and two, and they probably would have changed by then, but even even when we get way down, at, at a certain point, the screen becomes so small that they'll break, but um, they stay at three the whole time. Now, if we were to make this uh, MD, which means that it breaks on a medium screen, we would see them line up like this, but then once they get larger, once it gets out here more, once it gets to a medium screen size, there. At this point, when it goes from this size viewport, it breaks and it goes into a medium one. And so sometimes that's what you want. Um, but right for now, what we want is to have it do it at excess. And then what does this cause it? It makes it so that the checkboxes never really uh, break until it's way too late. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.